Um, you know, for, I want to just – Jim is such an excellent coach. Creighton is such a good team, so well coached. Um, when that bracket came out – I thought this could be our hardest game. I know what they're capable of. I've watched them several times this year, but also through the years. And I knew that their style of play would really challenge us. And uh, it obviously did. And so I just, um, those seniors uh, for Creighton have accomplished so much. And they are such a good basketball team. And just really want to give uh, a shout out to, to how, how much respect we have for the way they play um, and just how competitive they are. They, they've, they're a really good team. Secondly, I want to just say, wow, um, our crowd, they carried us. I thought in the third quarter, the energy that they gave us was so key. And I just, I just know how much goes into that um, from everybody in our support staff, marketing, um, you know, sports information, everybody that poured into us having that opportunity to have such a great crowd. 5.30 on a Monday night is not easy. And, uh, and, and they got it done. But I thought the crowd was a total difference maker. And then lastly, um, I'm just so proud of our team. Um, I'm proud of their selflessness. I'm proud of their growth mindset. I'm proud of their ability to have a next play speed mentality when things weren't going our way. And, you know, to respond and hold them to 21 points in the second half was tremendous. And we knew it was going to have to come with our defense. And then they had to adjust, and they started sending two and three people to Lauren. And we knew we had to attack off the bounce. And I thought Charisma and, and Kiki were just tremendous in some real critical moments. Uh, but it was all done with our defense in the second half. And, the, and just our – we have a phrase, and you've heard me say it a lot of times, but sometimes me, sometimes you, always us. And um, this was an us kind of win, and I'm so proud of the selflessness of this team. All right, we're going to open up the questions in the room for the student athletes. We'll start in the second row in the pink shirt. Um, Kiki, you kind of two things. What was the defensive adjustment or change in the second half? And then in the third quarter, I think you had 13 points. You had that kind of look of determination on your face. What were you feeling that allowed you to take over the game at that point? Yeah, first, defensively, I think, you know, we had a great game plan. Coach Tony put together a great scout, and I think in the first half we, you know, didn't completely follow that to the best of our ability. So in the second half we got together as a team, talked about transition defense, communicating on all their actions, and just uh, getting back to defending and executing the scout. Um, and that really helped us in the second half. And then in terms of the third quarter for me, I just felt like, you know, this is uh, obviously – at this point in the season, it's one one game and you're out. So I just knew that I needed to do whatever I had to do to you know help my team win. Whether that was um, you know feeding the ball to Lauren, Lauren was uh, so great in there, scoring, doing whatever. Um, and I think I just was focused on that. We're gonna go in the third row. Joe Reed, EAP. Lauren, how did it feel being back in the lineup? And <laughs> what was it like in the second half when they just kept sending two and three at you and it seemed like it was really tough traffic there in the paint. Um, yeah, at some point they're not going to let me play one on one. Um, <laughs> they saw that how that was going, so I think that <laughs> they needed to, you know, obviously like we knew at some point they were going to change their game plan. But um, I have so much trust and so much faith in my teammates that they're going to get open, and we work on that all the time. Like that's everyone's game plan against me. They're going to double team, triple team me. So um, I just think that that's what we work on in practice, and obviously a show today. And my teammates did a really good job cutting off me. So. And then, Kiki, how much did that open the paint up for you to drive because they were flooding the paint going after Lauren? Yeah, it totally um, changed the game. I mean, when Lauren's in there, they're sending multiple people to her. So um, I know that every time any guard in the perimeter really can drive, and Lauren's going to seal, get open, and we're going to have a good attack lane. We're going to go in the second row in the black blazer. Uh, Corey Jamin, Cretonian. Lauren. It felt like there was an adjustment made when you were guarding break to back off her in the second half. Mm -hmm. How did that impact your ability to protect the rim when you weren't having to go out and guard someone on the perimeter against that five out offense? Yeah, well, 14. yeah, 14. Yeah, <laughs> like he said, I mean, Coach Tony put together a really great game plan. And, you know, obviously, like, she's more of a passer than a scorer. So I think that's just we worked on in practice. And um, yeah, I think. That was just my whole job is to protect the paint, not let them get easy layups. I think in the first half I didn't do a great job of that, but the second half I did a lot better. So we're going to go in the second row in the middle in the black top. 
Hi, uh, Haley Sawyer, SoCal News Group. Um, I know limiting the three-point attempts was a big emphasis for you guys tonight, so um, how do you feel like you did in that area, especially in that first half compared to the second half? They got off 16 tonight, I think. We'll have Kiki answer first and then followed by Laura. Yeah, I mean, they're a fantastic three-point shooting team. They hit contested threes um, and open threes, so we knew we had to um, really run them off the line and force them into tough two-point jumpers. And I think in the first half, we didn't really do that very well. They got a lot of transition threes um, and good looks, but in the second half, we forced them into tougher shots. And I don't, I don't know how many they got off, but I definitely think it was less. What she said, pretty much. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just it was just communication at the end of the day. Like, we can do it. We work on it all the time. Um, we're one of the best defensive teams in the nation. We just got to put our minds to it and communicate, and that's all there is to it. So, We're going to go in the second row on the far end. Uh, Chase Wade, news for us online. Um, I just want to say great game tonight, guys. Very back-to-back -back fourth. Um, what are you guys going to do for these two victories to keep the momentum going for the next game? We'll have Kiki answer and then Lauren. Yeah, I mean, I think we watch film, um, we'll watch film from this game, see the areas that we can do better, and then prepare for um, you know our next opponent, which is LSU. And I think uh, we're really going to you know have good focused practices and scouts over these next few days, and get and just get prepared, um, you know, to you know play another really good team. Yeah. Um, like she said, I just don't think we have a lot of time to focus on each win. We just have to move on. Um, so, you know, right now, like, you know, it feels good right now, but we got to focus on our next game and just get ready for that. And um, I know our coaches are going to do a really good job of just, like, keeping us present and making sure we work hard every day in practice. So. Okay. Our next question is going to be in the front corner, near side. Uh, Gavin Carlson, Daily Bruin for both players, could you just talk about sort of Charisma's ability to lead by example? It felt like throughout the game she was full court pressing almost on her own, forcing turnovers. She had that one jump ball, and even in a night where she only made two shots, just talk about her impact on the floor. We'll start with Kiki and then go to Lauren. Yeah, I think that's one of uh, the best things about Charisma is that she doesn't need to have to, uh, to score to impact the game. and. Uh, in the first half especially, she was struggling uh, with making some shots, some shots that she knows she can make and she normally makes, but her defensive intensity and um, her focus, it really carried us. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just charisma. She's just a tough player. I mean, she doesn't need to score. She just, she works so hard and she's such a great example for the rest of us sophomores who are trying to get like her. And um, <laughs> I just think that she brings so much energy and so like, you know, it doesn't really matter what she's doing out there. You know that she's going to bring something to the team, no matter if it's points or whatever. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go in the second row in the black blazer. Uh, in her opening statement, Coach Close mentioned how the crowd impacted the game. What was it like on the court when the crowd was getting into it in that third, early fourth quarter? We'll start with Kiki and then go to Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was so great. I mean, playing in front of all the incredible fans that came out, it was just so much fun, and it made the comeback um, that much better, and the energy felt great in the gym. It was, sometimes it wasn't hard to hear, like, hard to hear our own play calls, um, but that was fun. It was just a great like, support, and we really enjoyed that. Yeah, just super thankful for everyone who came to show out on like a Monday night. It's not easy, so I'm just really thankful for everyone that got here. And yeah, like he said, it was just so loud at one point that I could not hear what she was saying. So I was just trying to guess the play that we were running at that point. But um, yeah, just really great crowd, and I'm really thankful for all the fans. So we got time for one more. It's going to be in the front here on the left side in the black top. Fredo Cervantes here with TG Sports. Kiki, you know, in the second half there, you know, you guys were trailing by 10. And what was going through your mindset as you kind of went off with 17 points in the second half? Like, what was going on there? Um, I think it was just finding a way to, uh, you know, take it possession by possession, get a stop and get a score. And I think that's what we did in the second half. We stringed together stops and got out in transition and started to play our game. But it was just um, not letting the uh, deficit at halftime, like, take away from our focus and what we needed to execute in the second half. And that's all we have time for. Thank you both. We're going to open it up to questions for Coach Close. As a reminder, if you're joining us on Zoom, please use the raise hand function if you have a question. OK. 
Okay, we're going to start in the front corner here. Gavin Carlson, Daily Bruin for coach, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, it felt like Creighton was scoring rapidly, like in five <laughs> seconds, seven seconds, yeah. um, especially getting on the perimeter and shooting threes. Um, just from my point of view, it seemed like the bench was pretty upset with the inability to locate players. Sort of what changed as the game went on? Was it just a matter of getting back? And, and how much of that was them having a lot of perimeter players, maybe you having two bigs on the floor? Yeah, I think that, you know, we, we're used to playing, um, you know, with four, you know, big, four guards, you know, I consider uh, Lena and, and uh, Angela like big guards, you know, um, but that matchup, when they played 14, we knew we could play Lauren and, uh, and that was going to allow us to do that. But then when they sub her out and they put in five shooters, um, we knew that that was going to pull her out. And I thought for a long time she did a really good job and she got hesitant for that last three we gave up. Um, but over Overall, I think she can do it. She's surprisingly quick. I think she was a little doubting herself um, after you know coming back from her injury, whether she could do it. And I just said, I looked in the eye and I just said, you got to make her drive. Uh, uh, hard twos are not going to hurt us. Make her drive. Get your heels on the three-point line. And uh, but I think that more than anything, it was just a will. Like. You guys, the system isn't going to do it. you got to go make plays together. And if you need to emergency switch something that we maybe didn't plan for, you do it. No layups, no threes. And how bad do you want this? you got 20 minutes to prove it. And at halftime, I, it just, I really laid into them about the choices. That we, we don't give up that many points and a half to anybody. And so we needed to just get back to doing things with our defense. I knew that if we could get enough stops, we'd score enough points. And I thought Cam was huge. And what happens is, is when she, uh, we got jumpers when she went in because we knew we needed her to cut to the basket. So you're really having two bigs right around the blocks. But that's when Angela got those threes, right? And then when we were able to play, uh, take her out and we were playing different lineups, then that's when Kiki was able to get downhill. And so I thought Cam, though, our ability to go offense, defense with her because she's such an anchor for us defensively. Um, but holding that team to 21 points in the second half, that, that was uh, truly remarkable. We're going to go in the first row with the blue top. Corn Wimby Dilly Bruin. Um, about Gabriella Jaquez. Yeah. On Double Double Watch tonight, continuing her performance from Saturday as well. What can you say about it? seemed like you were trusting her on the three. Yeah. Obviously, she's really skilled inside. Yeah. Um, her versatility, her intensity, the spark she brings for you all. Off yeah, the I think that it's really the intensity and her defense and her rebounding. Um, she wasn't having a good night. And even as um, we were coming off for a timeout, two of her teammates come up and tell Gabs to keep shooting. We know, trust her work. And it didn't go in, but she never let her missing threes affect her defense and rebounding. And I think that shows such a mental toughness. When things don't go your way on the offensive end and shots that you usually make at a good percentage um, and saying, you know what, it's not going to keep me from making a winning play in another area and that's not easy to do and she is such a tough competitor these kinds of games they they show you who loves to compete and Gabriela Jaquez loves to compete and I thought she was huge in that thanks we're gonna go in the second row in the black top We talked about the crowd a little bit, but there was some UCLA basketball royalty out there tonight yeah. between Ann Myers and um, Denise Curry. Um, even like Miss Val from gymnastics has kind of become a fan of you guys. Yeah. So what does that mean to have the support of like those who came before well, the Jordan career? Canada, Earl Watson, um, you know, Russell and Nina came out to the last game, you know, um, Lisey Brewer, Drexia Morris, all of our alumni that come back. I mean, whether you're royalty or you just have Bruin in your blood, uh, your family. And to have our family in the building, Earl's going to New York to support us in Albany. I mean, we've just got amazing alumni. And it's just, uh, it's an honor to represent them. You know, Mary Haggerty met me at going into the hallway and just was just so passionate and proud. Debbie Willie Halliday was here. I mean, the list, I'm, it's always scary when you start naming people. But I just really appreciate um, the Bruin bubble, the pride, the alumni, um, whether you're men's or women's, Kelly and Way Perez was here, softball was here. I mean, there's just so many things of, um, it's, a, it's, it's probably one of my favorite things about being the coach at UCLA is the family, that it really means something. If you represent the four letters across your chest, you are family for life. And so it's an honor to see those people and it's an honor to play for them uh, as we represent them on and off the court. 
We're going to go in Joe in the third row. Corey, you're now the fourth Pac-12 team to get to the Sweet 16. Could be six by the end of the night. I mean, what does it mean that in the final year of the conference yeah. to be balling like this? <laughs> yeah, it's just like, it. you know, every coach is – campaigning that their conference is the best in the country. I don't know how many times I've heard that. Uh, well, I'm going to say it, and I'm going to say our numbers are backing it up, you know, that I just think we have prepared, uh, you know, each other um, to be ready for big moments. Uh, the intensity that you have to come and be ready to play with and the solutions you have to find with all the different styles of play, it just is – it's an honor. And it was interesting, just the other day, um, Tara Vanderveer, who's the least person who would need to do this, sent a text message to all the other coaches and talked about what an honor it's been to coach in this conference. And then everybody was piping in all back and forth. But I just thought, you know, it used to be Stanford and the 11 Dwarfs. And now look at it. And who's the first person to champion that balance? Tara. And I just think it really has been a very special experience. We've built this together. Taking off our institutional hats and choosing to grow the game and grow the conference was more important. And that was a real big honor to be a part of. And then two games in L.A. tonight, two good crowds. I mean, what does this mean yeah. against the game? I don't know what theirs was, but we had almost 9,000 in the first night, and we had almost 8,000 in uh, on a Monday night at 5:30. Um, women's sports is here; it's doing something. Southern California basketball for the women is amazing, and get on board. It's it's a growth stock, people. Like, you better get in now and because it is spectacular. But I am so proud that Southern California is coming out to support these great players. Um, they are working their tails off. I remember back in the summer, we were playing open gyms with each other. And it was just competitive as all get out. But this is a, this is a special time in Southern California women's basketball. And uh, really thankful to you all that are telling these stories, creating the buzz. This is a culmination of your work as well as it is ours. And so we got to keep this thing going because these are two really young teams. And this is something that we have a really special um, trail to blaze over the next several years. And that's all we have time for. Thank you, Coach Close. All right. Thank you all for being here. We really appreciate you.